Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Introduction to the new OSHA Respirable Silica Stainer and Hexion Solution. My name is Andreina Dewent and I will be your host for today's session. I would like to introduce today's presenter, Adam Harper. He is the Technical Marketing Manager at Hexion. Adam has been with the company for seven years and is primarily responsible for providing technical support and leading new product commercialization. Adam will be talking to you today about the new OSHA regulations for respirable silica and what are the different solutions that exist in today's market. A recorded version of today's webinar will be sent to you via email and it will also be available on our website. Please type your questions during the presentation and we will answer as many as time allows us at the end of the webinar. To type your questions, click on the box that appears at the right side of the screen you may have to expand the panel by clicking on the orange arrow located at the top right hand corner. And with that, I'll turn it over to Adam. Thank you, Andrina, and thank you for joining us today. Here's a quick look at our agenda. We'll talk about the new OSHA respirable silica standard, when this new standard goes into effect, and what changes are coming for frac sand users and transporters. We'll talk about the different dust control solutions, Hexion Sentinel Dust Suppressant, and what you can do now to take action. So a little bit about the new OSHA standard. What it does is it sets a new permissible exposure limit for employees. So that permissible exposure limit, or PEL, is set at 50 micrograms per cubic meter of air, and that's calculated as an eight-hour time-weighted average. So the PEL is the maximum, but another important level is the action level which is set at 25 micrograms per cubic meter of air and that's important because if you can stay below that action level requirements outlined in this new standard do not apply so this standard has been in effect for several industries already for the hydraulic fracturing industry the first phase of this goes into effect on june 23rd 2018 so right around the corner and this first phase outlines medical surveillance obligations that are uh, going to need to take place. So uh, this first phase, uh, employees will be required to have an initial examination, and that consists of a medical and work history, a physical exam, a chest x-ray, and a pulmonary function test. All of these will need to be performed by a physician or some other licensed healthcare provider. So aside from the medical surveillance obligations, you'll also have to have on-site monitoring to determine your current uh, respirable silica level. So where are you on that scale? Are you above the PEL? Are you at the action level or below? Uh, different uh, requirements will, uh, t will go into effect depending on where you fall on that scale. So what does this mean to you? So like I mentioned, initial site monitoring is going to need to take place. There'll have to be an employee medical surveillance program put in place. Some additional monitoring may be required depending on where you are on that scale. Selection of dust control measures will need to take place. And you'll really just have to have a place to get started in, uh, in understanding what, what those added costs are from all of this. So we understand the importance of uh, addressing this new regulation with minimal impact to your current operations. So when we talk about different dust control solutions, they can really be put into two categories, the mechanical and the chemical solutions. The main difference between the two is that a mechanical solution, such as a vacuum system or some kind of dust collector, they're going to need to be deployed at each stage of the frac sand life cycle. A chemical, on the other hand, could be deployed one time and remain effective all the way until that sand is pumped down hole. Some other considerations for a mechanical type solution is that your dust collector or your uh, vacuum system uh, is going to collect a lot of respirable dust and that's going to need to be appropriately disposed of and that can lead to added costs. Some other things to consider is that mechanical systems break down. You can have a mechanical system failure. Uh, these uh, mechanical systems may require maintenance and then there could be a additional exposure to your employees if they're having to, to handle these, uh, these sacks or, or bins of, uh, of respirable dust. So just a little bit about Hexion. We know sand. We've been in the propent business for over 35 years, 
and we're a recognized leader for coding innovations in the oil and gas industry. Our engineering teams, we can support our customers every step of the way and help you get started. And we also have a technology center that can provide compatibility or performance testing as needed. So we'll, sit, we'll switch gears now and talk about Hexion Sentinel Dust Suppressant. And what it is, is a chemical solution that can be applied at any stage in the frac sand life cycle. So it can be applied at a sand mine, a transload, or a frac site. But again, the earlier on it's, it's applied, it can remain effective all the way until that sand is pumped down hole. It's effective on all mesh sizes, including 100 mesh, which is notoriously dusty. And it's capable of reducing those respirable silica levels to below the action level of 25 micrograms per cubic meter of air. The delivery system, it has a small footprint. It can be configured to be stationary or mobile. Uh, mobile configurations can be moved around on site as needed. And then it's also resistant to degradation. So as sand is transferred multiple times, it's going to remain effective even if it's moved from a mine to a transload to a frac site, it, it, will, it will continue to control respirable dust even after it's moved. So the application me mechanism is, is very simple. Uh, it requires only compressed air and it can be configured to fit virtually any vertical fall. The chemical is ready to use. It doesn't require mixing or dilution. The picture at right there is a, it's really a, an example of a system that we have deployed our engineering team can uh, develop systems that are, are specifically designed for your unique situation. We've had some customers who had a pneumatic transfer system and they wanted to have some inline applicator and we were able to work with them and, and develop a system that would meet their needs. The overall system, again, has a very small footprint. It can be fully contained on a trailer, uh, can be moved around as needed. This isn't some sort of large Connex box that's going to take up a lot of real estate on your site. And the chemical itself is very effective even at small doses. So one standard size tote is enough to effectively treat approximately 2 million pounds of sand. So the picture here, the two totes that are located on this trailer, uh, this is enough Sentinel to treat approximately 4 million pounds of sand. So here's a couple other pictures of the uh, Sentinel system deployed. The picture on the left is at a sand mine. So you can see the sand would fall through our unit and land on a uh, conveyor belt. Then it could be transferred out to storage or to a rail car or truck. The picture on the right hand side is uh, the applicator is attached to a mobile conveyor. So as sand is loaded out into a rail car or a truck, it can be treated and then it can be sent on its way out to the frac site. So I mentioned earlier about how this uh, the Sentinel treated sand is going to uh, remain effective even after multiple transfers. So the way we uh, the way we measured this is by doing ball milling testing. So what ball milling is is you have a large ceramic cylinder a large cylinder and it has ceramic balls inside the cylinder and they really beat up or pulverize the propent. And so at different time intervals, we'll take the, uh, the sand out and we'll measure how much dust is generated after each time interval. And you can see that the untreated 100 mesh sand, after each 15 minute interval, it gets dustier and dustier while the Sentinel treated 100 mesh sand remains flat. So more dust is, uh, is not going to be generated. Less dust is going to be generated after, um, after it, it's, uh, it's beat up. So this really demonstrates how effective Sentinel can be even when the sand is transferred multiple times. So I'm going to show a video. Uh, this is a, a demonstration we did out at a rail yard in Central Texas and what we did is we uh, unloaded uncoated 100 mesh sand and Sentinel treated 100 mesh sand through a mobile conveyor. It dropped about 25 feet into this open roll-off bin and uh, we measured the respirable silica that was generated. So the, the pictures are quite dramatic. You can see the uncoated 100 mesh sand. Uh, it really generates a lot of dust. The sentinel treated 100 mesh sand uh, doesn't generate that big cloud of dust you see. So the images themselves are quite powerful. But we also 
used a measurement device to measure the respirable silica. And what we saw is that the Sentinel treated sand had an average respirable silica level of 16 micrograms per cubic meter, well below that action level, while the uncoated 100 mesh sand had a respirable silica level of 1,470 micrograms per cubic meter of air, well above that permissible exposure limit. So this is just a still shot of the video we just saw. Uh, again, the Sentinel treated uh, 100 mesh sand well below that action level, and the uncoated 100 mesh sand is, is much, uh, much higher, well beyond that permissible exposure limit. Another question that's often asked is, what effect is Sentinel going to have on my frac fluid systems? So in-house, we've done uh, multiple tests with, uh, with different fluid, uh, fluid components. We tested with friction reducers. We, we tested with gel systems. And what we see is, is really minimal, minimal uh, impact on, on these, uh, these different chemicals. So we do have the ability to provide samples of Sentinel uh, if you require um, additional um, compatibility tests in your lab. So these dust particles are essentially propent fines and they can migrate through the propent pack and have a negative impact on well productivity. The sentinel dust suppressant can encapsulate these fines and keep them from migrating through the propent pack when the well is put on production. So you can see the image at, at the bottom there uh, you see a propent pack that has free pathways, clear pathways for oil and gas to flow. And the picture next to it, you see the propent pack that has these small particulates that have migrated and that are now blocking pathways for oil and gas to flow. Coulter and Wells did a study and determined that just 5% of fines can result in a 60% reduction in your flow capacity. So even though Sentinel is designed to control that respirable dust, it can also have an impact on the productivity of your well. So what, what you can expect if you engage our team to, uh, to help you navigate this new OSHA standard, uh, our engineering team can come out to your site, assess your current sand transfer process. Uh, we can develop a proposal for the implementation of the Sentinel dust suppressant. And we want to develop a program that has minimal interruption to your current operations. And then finally, Hexion, we can provide on-site support to confirm that our proposal is going to meet this new OSHA standard and meet your requirements on-site. So for more information, uh, we ask that you visit us at hexion.com slash sentinel, or you can email us directly at oilfield at hexion.com. And now we'll open it up for questions. Um, thank you, Adam. Uh, so we will now open the panel for questions. We have a few that came in during the presentation, but just a reminder, you can you can type your questions in the box that appears on the right side of the screen. Also, by now, you maybe notice uh, two documents that you can download. They are a brochure and an article about Sentinel. Feel free to download those. And um, Adam, here's the first questions that we got. Um, how is respirable silica measured on location? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So uh, there's an appendix in the new OSHA standard. It's it's appendix A, and it outlines all the acceptable methods of measuring respirable silica dust. So these tests are typically conducted by third-party industrial hygiene firms. Hexion does have a mobile uh, monitoring unit that uh, we can take out to the different sites, and we can measure respirable silica in real time. So this instrument is actually calibrated, and it correlates the respirable silica levels to the methods that are outlined in Appendix A. So this is a real-time uh, instrument that we can take uh, take on the on the, the location with us. Uh, but at this point in time, the gravimetric testing, the testing that's outlined in Appendix A, um, it is still required to prove compliance uh, with the new standard. Great. Um, second question is, uh, so I have an somebody says I have an application system in place already. Will Sentinel work, um, the applicator work for their, for their work? Yep. Yeah, so if they, if they have an, applica an application system in place, um, 
you know, we understand that that each system can be unique. So we would want to assess the configuration that you have to make sure that it's compatible with the Sentinel chemical. Um, we can assist you. We can schedule a, a site visit with our engineering team. They have a lot of experience with this. Um, so, you know, we just reach out to us and, and we can get something scheduled for our engineers to come out and, and uh, take a look at your site. Great. Um, so if we get any questions regarding price or availability, we'll have to answer those um, on individual basis offline. Um, here's our, our next question. Will Sentinel work for dust control outside of frac sand? So for example, in, in another industry that it's not related to oil and gas. Yeah, so so we, we have actually been working with, uh, with multiple companies outside of the oil and gas industry. So uh, they saw this application for the oil field and they thought, well, this, this may be something that could work for my industry. So uh, they reached out to us. Um, you, you know, like we mentioned in the presentation, we do have in-house capabilities. Uh, we can test co compatibility with um, all sorts of different materials and chemistries. Uh, we have technology center uh, that's, that's very capable of, of doing that. And again, you know, we'd, we'd wanna uh, put you in touch with our engineering team so they can uh, understand your, your specific situation and, uh, and get with you to come up with a plan. Um, great. Uh, another question is how much Sentinel is added to SIN for dust control? Yeah, no, another great question. And, um, you know, like, like we mentioned in, in the presentation, uh, the, the chemical is very, uh, very effective at small doses. So just one standard size tote is, uh, is enough to effectively treat approximately two, two million pounds of sand. So, uh, so pretty, uh, pretty effective even at those small doses. Um, last question, how do you coat it? Yeah, so uh, not, to, not to get too far into the details, um, you know, we, we've developed a, a method that, uh, <clears throat> that, you know, the sand essentially falls through uh, our application system. It's coated and then it can go directly uh, through that applicator into a truck or a rail car or to storage. But again, uh, we have uh, an engineering team that's capable of, of um, you know, understanding what your unique situation is and the coding, um, the coding method may differ depending on what your unique situation is. So uh, we could come up with, with more of a customized solution just depending on your uh, unique situation. Um, last, the other question is, does the coating requires drying? So, so no, uh, like I mentioned, it, it, once it falls through this, well, in, in the case where we have a, uh, a gravity applicator and, and the sand is actually falling through it, it comes out and it, it doesn't need any sort of drying, um, anything like that. It can go directly into a rail car. Uh, it can go do directly into a truck if needed. So there, there's no drying time that, that, that is required. Um, perfect. I think that's it. Um, Thank you guys for your questions and Adam, thanks again. Uh, if we weren't able to get to your questions, we'll follow up with you directly. Uh, also a reminder, if you missed part of this presentation at the beginning, if you wanna hear it again, you will receive an email with a recorder version um, in the near future. Uh, and with that, we'll end this presentation. We'd like to take a short poll before you leave. Uh, we'll appreciate that. And that, that concludes our, our webinar. Thanks again for joining us.